The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom releases in just over three weeks time and today loads of previews have been released with hands-on impressions of the game. You know, we've all been enjoying the trailers, the hype and the build-up, but what is it like to play the game? Well today I'm going to go through all the latest hands-on previews for Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Well before we begin, check out the description for all the hands-on impressions used in today's video. Plus also this video does contain some spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled for the game, consider this your spoiler warning. Okay, we're going to start with Tom Phillips from Eurogamer who describes using Zelda's echo ability and how it makes the game feel unique from other Zelda games. So Tom says, early on, as Zelda attempts to escape the dungeons of Hyrule Castle, she dons a cloak previously worn by Link and briefly is mistaken for him. At any second, I was expecting her to produce the Master Sword from a hidden pocket and start swinging, but Echoes of Wisdom is not that type of game and it's all the better for it. Whereas Link's most common starting item is typically something to start hitting enemies with, Zelda's fancy new tri-rod allows you to conjure up echoes of objects that you've seen previously. Now, in video game terms, you don't have a weapon per se, but a toolkit with which to solve a problem. Now, a puzzle or a group of enemies that need clearing, so you quickly amass a library of in-game assets available to spawn and despawn into and out of being. From a garden variety of objects such as barrels or boulders to every kind of enemy that you encounter. There's definitely a playfulness here, a sense that experimentation is something to be encouraged. Need to cross a gap? Well, one of your first echoes you can access is a bed, perfect for bridging spaces and walking across. And you can also use it for a quick nap as well. Need some cover to hide behind as enemies near your position will wave the tri rod to summon a large potted plant to duck behind. Your new magical staff is powered by Tri, the Zelda series latest companion character and one you're going to want to keep an eye on. Tri's pixel-like tail indicates how many echoes that you can create at any one time and you start the game being able to conjure three at once but it looks like this will be upgradable as you progress. As each echo is created, Tri's tail shortens and when you remove that echo it grows back. It's a handy visual guide for how many echoes that you have to play with. Echoes provide you with a range of options of which to solve puzzles, further explore and also do battle, and the system feels both powerful and inventive. Being attacked by a flying bat enemy will call upon a moblin with a bow and arrow to shoot it down. Alternatively though, you could pop down a spiny shelled critter in front of you and watch the bats dive bomb that instead finishing themselves off. Well, bat enemies can also be used for gliding, spiders can be used to ascend, you know, and at one point I acquired an echo for a giant slab of meat, with the hint they'd be useful to distract a certain type of enemy in the future. You know, I would later summon up the meat to feed to an enemy I thought would love it, only to see them ignore the meat. Still, having that giant steak lying there meant I accidentally penned the enemy in allowing me to fire off an armadillo enemy that pinballed off the surfaces, crashing around that meat to flatten everything in its path. You know, the echo system gets really deep as well, thanks to the inclusion of physics and the elemental systems that might seem more at home in Breath of the Wild. Heavy boulders placed on top of breakable objects won't necessarily crush what's underneath, but summoning them while high up and then heaving them down on top of something breakable will do the job thanks to their momentum. Well, next up we got Brian Altano from IGN who describes the dungeons in Echoes of Wisdom. The Southern Ruins dungeon was the perfect proving ground to test all of these toys. You know, it's a traditional Zelda dungeon through and through and it looks and feels fantastic. It was truly exciting to finally be back in one of these again, but instead of relying on newly discovered items or weapons to beat it like you would an older Zelda dungeon, you're learning how to summon new things every other minute. You've got an entire arsenal to play with, each room feels rife for experimentation and playfulness, some puzzles had a clear and obvious answer while others demanded some creativity and seeing how different people solve them in different ways was a total joy. The speedrunning and sequence breaking communities out there are going to have a blast with this game. Well, Alex Olney from Nintendo Life describes fighting Link at the end of the first dungeon. Well, Alex says, Link was honestly terrifying. We tried everything we could, but beyond a few hits on the back of the head from a moblin spear here or there, 
his shield blocked everything else, and we couldn't attack fast enough to counter once he dropped his guard to stab us. Well then it struck us, earlier in the dungeon we needed to use Tri's bind to pull a shield off something to progress. You know, our brains hadn't really made the connection straight away, but sure enough Link's guard could be disabled by ripping his shield from his hands. That's when he started moving about twice as quickly and became significantly more aggressive. Now we do hasten to point out that this is not absolutely required to defeat him. We did manage to take him down to less than half health with a series of bodged attacks from the Echoes, but this little bit of game design was unbelievably satisfying. So defeating quote unquote Link also provided us with a recently announced gameplay feature, and that is the Sword Fighter form. This gives Zelda a sword and your abilities then essentially mirror those of Link. At first, we were a touch disappointed by this, feeling as though it was an admission that the game couldn't be carried by Echoes alone, but after a short time we changed our tune. Sword Fighter form is stupendously brief, lasting maybe 15 seconds or so, so it's seemingly required for a few puzzles, but more than anything else it served as a panic button for us. You know, if we were suddenly mobbed by an onslaught of nasties, we could rely on Sword Fighter form to quickly give us a breather, but the energy you need to recover in order to use it again was surprisingly scarce. But it's nicely balanced, well done Nintendo. Well, next up we've got Michael McWhirter from Polygon who describes using Zelda's reverse bond ability. So in addition to the Tri-Rod's copy and paste abilities, Zelda's magic wand can also bond her to objects. When Zelda bonds with something, it moves and she moves. So bond is very helpful for creating makeshift shields or pushing objects and monsters around. Inversely, Zelda can use a power called reverse bond in which Zelda moves in accordance with an object like a floating platform or a spider climbing up the wall. Bond can also be used in battle. One of Echoes of Wisdom's early boss battles is a showdown with what appears to be a possessed Link, or a magical recreation of Link. Zelda needs to use Bond to tether herself to Link's Hylian shield and yank it out of his hands for him to be vulnerable to attack. Once Link's shield is gone though, Zelda can summon all manner of monsters to take him down. Well finally I want to go back to Brian Altano from IGN who continues talking about blending the best of 2D and 3D Zelda games. So Brian says, just when you think they're going to do the most obvious thing, Nintendo hit you with a surprise out of nowhere. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom takes everything that they've learned from the decades of 2D Zelda games and throws in some freeform creativity and problem solving from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom and puts it all together in the beautiful Link's Awakening remake art style. It's also solving one of the biggest gripes players have had with modern 3D Zelda games by bringing back the traditional dungeons, a key ingredient of this recipe that has been sorely missing recently. Yeah, it's taking all the best things of the 2D and the 3D Zelda games they've done and fusing them together to create the future of the series, and so far it is really working for me. Seemingly every screen in Echoes of Wisdom provided me with an opportunity to approach it in a unique way while still feeling like I was playing an old school top down Zelda game. Initially my impulse was to just slash everything with a sword like I've made Link do for most of my life and I was admittedly a bit frustrated that I couldn't. So it does take a little bit of getting used to with Zelda's abilities here but once you find your groove things really start to get fun and interesting. So you can throw rocks at enemies to kill them like some kind of savage, but wouldn't it be funnier to swarm them to death with bats, summon some moblins, or you can also bowling ball them to death with loads of carmadillos. So all the previews seem very glowing so far and it makes me even more excited for what is to come from The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, releasing on the 26th of September 2024, and that is just over three weeks away. Once again, you can check out all the hands-on previews in the links in the description, and also let me know what you think in the comments, and let me know your hype levels, I would love to hear what you think. Well that's it today for this hands-on preview roundup for Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, and as always, thank you so much for watching or for listening, don't forget you can hit that subscribe button down below for even more Zelda content here on Triforce Times, and you can also like the video and share the video too, that would help me out here on the channel. Well, thanks again, and I will see you very soon.
But this video is brought to you by Triforce Times Backstage. This is available through Patreon or YouTube membership and you're going to get exclusive benefits plus you'll be able to go above and beyond to support Triforce Times. Free content is core to Triforce Times and you can continue to enjoy these videos that you know and love. However, if you want to enjoy the benefits like early access, our community discord, shout outs in the credits of videos, content polls and exclusive videos, then select the tier that is right for you and join Triforce Times backstage today. So help me make Triforce Times be even bigger and better, plus you're going to get some added benefits for a small fee every month. Well thank you for listening and now it's time to go back to the video.